Hi, this is Jason from Music in the Air. In this episode of the program Insights, I will introduce you one of the early works by Beethoven, the G minor sonata for piano and cello, Opus 5, number 2, which will be part of our uh, concert program this Sunday, September 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. If you have not purchased the ticket, please visit our website www.musicintheair.com for concert and ticketing information. So in this concert, this Sunday, we will present you the first movement of this G minor sonata. And when Beethoven wrote this piece, he was only uh, 25 years old, on the way to Prague and Berlin for uh, the concert tour. Uh, he finished the piece when he arrived in Berlin and performed that with cellist Duport uh, for the monarchy. And this piece follows the traditional uh, sonata form. It has a in slow introduction and then allegro, which has three sections, uh, the exposition, development, and recapitulation. And in the slow introduction, uh, Beethoven use uh, the French overture style, which you hear uh, a long chord at the beginning and followed by a flowing line. And uh, one of the uh, significant character of the French overture is the dotted rhythm should be always a little bit over dotted. So instead of playing the dotted rhythm um, uh, metronomically like this, <laughs> You will hear the beginning of the piece somewhere like this. So we, we make the longer note a little bit longer and the short note a little bit delayed and play a little bit shorter. And that way uh, you brings out the nobility and the dignity of the character of the French overture, but also keeps some kind of elegance and the fl natural flow in the music. Um, and this dotted rhythm uh, became the motif carrying through the whole uh, slow introduction. And eventually it leads to a question that Beethoven raised. <laughs> And without resolution, Beethoven wrote rest and another bar of rest. And in the end of that bar, he wrote a fermata, which means hold on or taking a pause. So this is a really serious question Beethoven raised and he needs time to think through and find the answer. And after a long pause, Beethoven finally give us an answer in the cello part. And that became the first theme of the Allegro. And following uh, the structure of the uh, sonata form, you know, after the first thing, that, uh, you will expect another thing, the second thing, uh, usually in a contrasting character from uh, the first thing. And in classical music, we have something called rule of three, which means you know, the same thing don't repeat three times. It may repeat twice, but the third time is always different. So in this second thing, Beethoven uh, choose to write something rather lyrical. And repeats again. But third time, it became something different with a totally different color. He wrote down dolce on the score, which means sweet. <laughs> so I use more vibrato, a little bit more speed, um, so and more of the flow. So that's the two important material in the exposition. And in the development, uh, the composer will use the mo motifs from the exposition to develop them 
uh, to something rather complex. And in the recapitulation, we will hear the same uh, material from the exposition. However, the piece has to end, and Beethoven wrote a very nice coda section. Um, however, he decided to not, uh, not to end the piece in the same key, G minor, and he chose to end the piece in the G major, which is uh, not very common to see in the sonata form. So after 12 bars of the chorale, and then we enter to the world of the G major, and then Beethoven certainly gave us a great celebration, which is full of energy and uh, satisfaction. Although Beethoven didn't compose the Ninth Symphony all to joy until 28 years after he wrote this piece, but I believe his journey of pursuing the ultimate joy has already begun before he composed this sonata in G minor. Mm -hmm.